this video tutorial, we'll look at the price analysis concept of profitability. Now, profitability comes up in many exams at different levels. In terms of A2 business, given an exam paper on page 2, will actually be the formula for the ratio for return on capital employed. That's the only one shown on the paper. At AS business, we also look at profitability margins, net profit and gross profit margins. Again, you could use these in A2 exam and certainly you need to use them in an AS exam. But just showing you here that on the A2 paper on Buzz 3, you wouldn't actually see those ratios appear. So we'll start by looking at return on capital employed. So what is it? Well, one example is the £10 challenge. A lot of institutions use this to try and develop and demonstrate entrepreneurial behaviour. So an individual is given £10 and they're given the instructions they must take that £10, use it legally, however they like, and over a period of time, perhaps six weeks, two months, whatever, they must try and develop that £10 and grow it by maybe buying, selling, trading, providing services. At the end of that period, they return the money back to wherever it's come from, they pay back the £10, and then we see how much they've made on top of that. Well, essentially, that £10 is the money that's been invested in that individual, and they can use that to grow. Famously, Alan Sugar starts off with £50, he bought uh, electronic equipment with, which he sold from the back of a van, and then developed his business from there. So return on capital employed is all about how you take invested money, or borrowed money, and try to grow it and generate profit from it. Let's have a look at return on capital employed in an exam scenario. So here we've got some extracts of a balance sheet and an income statement, and the pink numbers you can see here are the numbers we're going to use. So our formula, as shown here on the left, is operating profit, which at our level of study is the same as net profit, divided by our capital employed, which is total equity plus non-current liability. So we're going to add together the amount of money the business has put in itself, perhaps from shareholders, 167 million you can see here, plus what's borrowed, because that's still capital that's been employed, so it's 400 million. Note the fact that even though that 400 million pounds is borrowed, so it's a negative figure, it may be shown in brackets, we add that to the 167 to give us a total that's actually been put into this business. We're not worried about whether it's owed or otherwise. So our formula would be 14 divided by 167 plus 400, so 14 million divided by 567 million times 100%. So that'll give us an answer of 2.47%. So essentially this business, for every pound that has been invested or borrowed, makes a little over 2 pence, so 2.47 pence to be precise doesn't sound very much, but it's positive. Maybe investors are looking for a little bit more. Certainly I could go to a bank and potentially get 3, 4, 5%. There may be other businesses we can compare to that offer a better return on capital employed. So investors may be interested in that. So just to interpret this, the higher return on capital employed, the better. There is no ceiling. Um, if it's a very high return on capital employed, you have to wonder how sustainable that might be. If it's a negative return on capital employed, that essentially means the business has made a loss. The money that's been invested has actually generated a loss. The business hasn't been able to turn profit from it. The return on capital employed shows how efficient the business is at making profit from invested money. Remember, this is important for investors. These are the people who will be looking at this to see how well we're running. Equally, managers will be judged on actually how well they're getting the business to perform. We can improve it by getting the capital that we've invested, our capital employed, to work harder, both our loans and our shareholders' funds. So this could be by either increasing profit from the existing capital, generating greater returns from the money we've already put in, or getting the same level of output by taking some of those assets out. So maybe repaying loans, but still generating that same profit. So let's move on to some other measures of profitability. And these are our gross and net profit margins. Now I'm going to share with you now a pet hate. I do enjoy, for entertainment purposes, watching The Apprentice television series. Entertaining, but in terms of business reality, sometimes a little bit misleading. The teams are often sent out and they are given some money to go and buy some items. They then have lots of things laid on for them, design companies etc to help them to develop that idea and they then sell those ideas. Or they may purely be buying from a wholesaler and then reselling items to generate some profit. So the example here, for example, if we bought something for £10, sell it for £50, they would suggest they make a £40 profit. And in the end, in the boardroom, that's what they're judged on, who makes the most. 
Now that's actually gross profit. That's great, it's really useful we need to make a gross profit, but we're missing something really significant. Have you ever noticed in The Apprentice that they have lots of taxis laid on for them? They have phones that they're talking into. An advertising agency may be laid on, design come to produce things. And of course, we have perhaps eight people on a team, we're not paying many wages. So those things aren't included, these are our other expenses. Our gross profit only considers the cost of the actual goods themselves that we're selling, or cost of sales. In reality, when we pay all these bills, we're left with a smaller sum, might not be 40 pence, but this is our net profit. Now net profit, this is why I don't like The Apprentice, because it focuses on the gross profit, net profit is real profit. It's what we can actually now reinvest and use as a business. If all those costs at the bottom of the page outweighed that £40 we made on that sale, or those sales, then actually business would make a loss and it wouldn't be sustainable in the long term. So net profit is a far more important measure, but gross profit too tells us quite a lot. If we apply these to big business, let's have a look at gross profit first. So these are formulas, if you have to calculate them, you need to remember they're not given to you in an exam. You will get credit for them, and certainly students have used these very well, in questions, finance questions, to actually help support it. And AS may be something where actually you need to calculate these and you're asked to calculate them. So gross profit margin is gross profit divided by revenue. So this tells you essentially what percentage of the sales price would actually be gross profit. So it's the markup if you like. Multiply by 100 to give a percent. Both these figures come from the income statement and you'll see them highlighted in pink. Our revenue, our turnover, 185 million and our gross profit of 95 million. Not like about 100% and that tells us our gross profit margin. So in this case it's 51.4%. And you can see that approximately for the numbers anyway. We make 185 million pounds worth of sales and actually the cost of those sales was 90 million. Our gross profit therefore is 95 million. So it's approximately half of our sales revenue. So it's just over 50%. So for every pound Selling price, 51 pence of that is gross profit. 48.6% will actually be the cost of those items. So that's useful. So we're taking an item and we're essentially doubling the price as we sell it. Our net profit actually takes away all of the other expenses. It will take away wages, premises, any other utility bills and any other costs we've, we incur in making that sale. So it's going to be a smaller number. So you can see here, but this time our net profit's only 14 million. If it was a negative figure, it means we've actually made a net loss. Again, divided by our revenue, 185 million, and times 100 to come a percent. So this time it's only 7.6%. Again, does that mean it's good or bad? Well, it will depend on the context of the business. Is it going up? Is it going down? What do our competitors do? What do other parts of our business, if we have profit centers, what are they doing? So of our selling price, every pound of that, if you like, 7.6 pence is actually usable profit, so 7.6 percent. A lot of businesses are very pleased with this, but again, it depends on the context that you're looking at. So just to summarise these, so what do they mean? How would you use this? Well, the higher the profit margin, obviously the better. It means you're making more profit. It will never be over 100 percent because it's just not possible. You've got to pay something, so it won't be over 100 percent. For a pure service, our gross profit margin may well be 100%, maybe no cost in providing that service. Left profit margin will always be bigger than gross profit margin, because gross profit margin does not consider all of our costs. So we have to take those off first, which means when we get to net profit margin, it's going to be a smaller figure. Net profit itself is smaller than gross profit. High gross profit suggests that value has been added. It means that we're taking the price of a good and we're actually able to add quite a lot on to come up with our selling price. So maybe consumers think that, customers think that what we're selling is fantastic and they really want to buy it, even if it doesn't cost us very much. We've added value somewhere along the lines. Or it could mean there's very little competition, so we've actually got the flexibility to put prices up. Maybe we have a product where it's reasonably inelastic demand. A big drop from gross profit to net profit suggests the running costs are very high. It could be an efficiency, it could be the nature of business. It could be a very exclusive luxury brand that lays on a lot of things for customers to actually support them. That has to be based in quite an expensive location. That has to have a lot of facilities to actually give that aura of the brand. So don't always think that a low net profit compared to gross profit margin suggests that the business is inefficient. It could reflect the nature of the products being sold. 
for a net profit, may suggest the business is wasting money for unnecessary expenditure. Certainly, again, look at it in terms of trends. Always really important with any ratios to think about where they're coming and where they're going to and how they compare to competitors. And finally, we can improve either the profit margins by reducing costs or putting prices up. Again, though, putting prices up could have other issues in terms of competitiveness for a business. So it's not the best thing to do. So, in a nutshell, that's the profitability ratio.